Hi, welcome to my kitchen. Today I have a special treat. Actually, it's something that I grew up with as a child. My mother used to make this for us all the time. Uh, you probably are used to me now mentioning my mother often because those are the dishes that I grew up eating and those are the dishes that are closest to my heart, the ones that she used to make. This particular dish is roasted cauliflower with citrus tahini sauce. It's actually one of the recipes that's in my cookbook. And um, I've uh, played around with the, um, with the presentation and the way, it, the way I, I like to cook it, um, but I'm still staying true to the recipe that, um, that my mother put together. You know, all the flavors are exactly the same as what she would have done, but I'm just gonna present it in the way that I like to do it. I start with one whole head of cauliflower, and I'm not gonna be removing any of the greens. I like the presentation to have all the greens showing. I like the vegetable to show as much of its natural beauty as possible. So I have a pan here already lined to go into the oven with parchment paper. My oven is on 500 degrees ready to roast my cauliflower, so everything is ready. So with my big sharp knife, I'm going to hold on to this uh, cauliflower, or as we call it in uh, Arabic, it actually has two names. Uh, in Palestine, mostly we call it Zahra, which literally means flower, which makes sense. Or it could be called Arnabit or Karnabit as well. That's another name for it. Okay, so I'm going to cut right down. Okay, and I'm trying to get um, a piece that's going to be intact. So um, this has come to be known as a cauliflower steak. So for people who don't eat um, meat, this is um, uh, quite a nice alternative. So you feel like you're cutting into a steak. So I'm gonna cut right through. It's about an inch thick. And I'm trying to get, I wanna show you a piece just like that so that the uh, core is intact and holding onto it and the green is still there as well. So I love that. Now I can sometimes get three if I'm lucky, I don't know if I'm going to be this lucky today because it's not a very big cauliflower. I might be able to get four, but if I get two, I'm happy. So I'm going to get the ones that I finished and I'm going to place them on the sheet. Take my, my favorite olive oil, and that's Palestinian olive oil, of course, and I'm going to drizzle onto my Zahra, okay, quite generously. Okay, so I'm just sprinkling in a little bit of salt. So now my um, cauliflower, Zahra, is in the oven. It's roasting. While it's roasting, I'm going to make the sauce, okay? So for the sauce, I have my bowl, and I have already pounded um, one clove of garlic, one small clove of garlic, and I put a little bit of salt just to give it some friction, okay? And I'm actually using, I mean, I, I really take a lot of pride in a lot of the things that I use and I've kept over the years. This is actually a gift from a dear friend of mine, um, all handmade stone uh, pestle and mortar uh, made in Palestine. So I'm very, very um, proud to have this and use it. And every time I use it, of course, I remember my dear friend Maram. So I'm going to put my... Uh, garlic in here. I have just fresh lemon juice, so I just squeeze some real lemon, okay, and that's going to get added to my garlic. I'm going to use my zester and I'm going to zest a few strands of orange zest that are going to go into this beautiful sauce. And what the zest gives it is this beautiful um, perfume. It's a really nice aroma. And if you're new to Arabic food and the way we cook, um, our food is, is, you know, it's not excessively spicy, but it's always punctuated with citrus and special smells, beautiful aromas. I also like to squeeze in some of the orange juice, okay? So this is gonna give my sauce a little bit of uh, sweet and sour notes. But what I'm going to add is probably the other uh, quintessential ingredient in the Palestinian kitchen, and, uh, and that is tahini. And so I'm going to pour in my tahini, and tahini should be nice and fresh. And if you taste it, okay, I'm just going to taste. It shouldn't be bitter. It should be nice and nutty. 
and there's even a little bit of sweetness to it, okay? That's what good tahini tastes like. And just incorporate all these ingredients together to create a nice, beautiful sauce, okay? And you'll notice when you add tahini to citrus, okay, automatically you'll see it actually starts to seize, as you can see right now. It starts to thicken instantly, all right? So there it has thickened. And now I'm just going to mellow it just a little bit by adding some nice, fresh um, homemade yogurt, okay? So I've got probably about two big tablespoons in here, all right? Now, you could forego the yogurt. It's not an essential ingredient, but it does help um, creamify it, and um, it helps just um, mellow the flavors a lot. All right, so what I've done here, and I've just... I've already done this ahead of time just to save time. And basically I've caramelized some onions. So I've used some beautiful sweet Vidalia onions. And I've also combined a little bit of the red, red onion in here too. And I've cut them into, into crescents. And I've sauteed them slowly on the stove with olive oil, okay? And what happens when you do that and take your time, a little bit of salt as well in here, is the onions actually cook down and the natural sugars that are inside the onion come out. So um, it just becomes more intense, more oniony, and more sweet. So this sweetness is going to be a beautiful complement to our cauliflower when we put it all together. So here they are, done. All right, and um, I just want you to see how the cauliflower is fully baked. And like I promised you, with the fork, if you poke through it, there's gonna be no resistance whatsoever, okay? So you know that it's fully, fully cooked. So I place one here. I'm going to place a second here. So now I drizzle beautiful gorgeous sauce all over and you can put more or less depending on what you like okay you taste it and see how much of the sauce you'd like to put on and I'm just going to place randomly some of these beautiful caramelized onions my mother used to always finish it off with that beautiful buttery crunch that comes by way of toasted pine nuts um, if you don't have pine nuts, you can certainly um, substitute for almonds, okay? Or even pistachios are delicious, all right? But I happen to have these here. And then um, um, my jewels have come out. And this is a little bit of fresh pomegranates. It's the season for them right now here in Canada. A little bit of parsley, okay? And the parsley is just to add a little bit of green here and there. Okay, it's really for garnish. And of course, not only is it garnish, it's also something that is delicious. So you could certainly enjoy this, um, this dish with a fork and knife. Okay, just cut through it like you would a steak with the sauce, okay. Mm, so delicious. That beautiful earthy cauliflower Really, the citrus tahini sauce just lifts it up to another world. And then, of course, the sweet pomegranate gives it that nice little sweet crunch and as well the pine nuts. So every single component of this dish um, sings to me and takes me back, actually, to my mother's kitchen when she used to make this for us as children, and I just couldn't get enough of it. And in addition to eating it like this, um, I like to eat it with bread, whether it's Arabic bread or this beautiful Jerusalem kaik or Jerusalem bread that um, is also uh, delicious. Just dip it in, okay, especially with the tahini, and enjoy. Maybe next time we'll make this. So until then, bye everybody.